Another common problem that shows up in audio recording is hum or audio line noise, which we generally associate it as a ground loop. Now, this sound is approximately around the 50 or 60 Hz frequency band upon if we are working in North America or Europe. Let's go ahead and see how the dehum module works in order to remove line noise, and as well we're going to see how the spectral denoise module works in order to obtain the most polished audio content. Alright, now that we're back inside Pro Tools, there are two files here that I have previously prepared that have some problems that we're going to try to fix with the dehum module and the spectral denoise module. The first file that I'm going to play for you, it's a guitar playing. A lot of you are going to be very accustomed and know and recognize the very annoying sounds of the amp that produce in this case that 60 hertz buzz that in many cases will compromise a lot the performance of a guitar player. I'm going to let you hear the file. So as you could hear, throughout the whole performance, there is this low frequency bzz, buzz that gets in the way of the guitar. So my goal here is to remove that 60 hertz hum, preserving as much as I can the guitar sound. So to do so, I have selected my guitar, creating my playlist, and then send this file to repair inside Isotope. All right, here's the file. Alright, so the first thing I want to do uh, is to focus my attention a little bit more on the lower end part of our spectrum. As we have described so far, the hum is generated by 50 or 60 hertz frequency band. So in order for me to visualize in greater details that specific frequency band, I need to change my frequency scale. So I'm going to go here on the Y axis of our Isotope RX, right click and choose Extended Log. As you can see here already, the, the 60 hertz hum is present in like a very thick and long line throughout the whole performance. So by changing the frequency scale here, we can have greater resolution of the two extremes, the high and the lower part of the spectrum. I'm going to go ahead and open the dehum module. And what I'll do is to zoom in and finding out a space within my audio which only has the, the noise that we intend to remove with the dehum. I'm going to press T to select our time tool. And apparently here at the beginning of our performance, we have our uh, 60 hertz hum. I recommend you to listen with a good pair of headphones, otherwise it's going to be rather impossible for you to hear this frequency with your laptop. Anyhow, over here, within, within the, um, the DHUM module, you have um, a couple of very useful options for you to tweak. The first is um, your base frequency selection. Now, right now, I'm going to go ahead and choose 60 Hz. If you are unsure of which frequency you're actually aiming to remove, you can always choose the button Suggest, which in this case is going to have the module suggesting you the frequency that he thinks is close to what um, is close to the, the problematic frequency here. Now, another thing you want to pay attention to it is the frequency cue. Now, as you can see here, we have our fundamental frequency and a set of harmonics. Now, each one of those harmonics, which are of course multiple of the fundamentals, have a very narrow notch filter that picked up that specific harmonic and lowered of approximately 60 decibel. Now with the frequency cue, you can have a, a broader intervent, which in this case, I won't recommend using it because it will introduce a lot of artifacts or an even extra narrow intervent of each one of those harmonics. Generally speaking, a thousand as a cue, it's pretty good. Now, the last thing you want to make sure is the number of harmonics. Now, the number of harmonics over here corresponds as well to the harmonics that this hum will produce. And you want to tweak these parameters over here because you want to try to preserve the harmonics of the guitar to be removed by the dehum module. 
So what I'm going to do from now is to select my entire portion of the audio and play a little bit with our output only. And um, I'm going to start with a very high number of harmonics and reducing it. What I want to do is kind of like reduce the number of harmonics uh, as much as I can in order to preserve as best as I can the sound of our guitar. All right, I think it's in a good stage. I'm gonna try to just lower it a little bit, the number of harmonics to six, because again, I don't wanna go too up high in the spectrum and uh, I don't want my guitar to be affected by it. I'm gonna remove the output only and just preview what the DHAM module is interpolating of the audio. already a big difference. I can compare the before and after with the compare button. And right now I can preview the original. Listen carefully to the low end, to the low end bzzz that is underneath the whole performance. After. That sounded great to me, but there are still a few tweaks that I want to do. So first of all, what I'm going to do, other than resizing my zoom, is to give a couple of passes of render. So I'm going to render once, and look already what happened to the 60 hertz frequency and to hold its harmonics around the spectrum. I'm going to give a second pass of render. And what I'm going to do next is open a second module, a spectral denoise module to kind of like get rid of the hyper harmonics that are still present within my guitar. As a matter of fact, if you hear carefully, there's still a minor buzz that I might be able to remove. So I'm going to work with the spectral denoise in order to remove whatever it's left. The great thing again in working inside Isotope as a standalone is that you can start placing module after module in a chain in order to create the best restored audio. Now, generally, the spectral denoise is used in order to remove broadband noise issues like traffic background, air conditioning in the background, which we're going to see in a few seconds. Or in this case, we have still a little bit of a buzz from the amplifier. Now the key of making the denoise module work properly is to find a section of your recording where there is just the noise. So what the module is going to do is to use this parameter learn in order for the module to learn the profile of that sound, interpolate it, and then you're going to be able to then remove and discern the noise from the actual audio. So I'm going to close the dehum for a minute, move the spectral denoise on the side, zoom in, and go seek for where we only have the noise of the amplifier. I'm going to deselect, time tool, and apparently here at the beginning or at the end of the recording we have a lot of this information regarding the noise. So after I've selected this information, I'm going to go ahead and click learn. And as you can see right now, the module has pretty much learned the profile of this noise. Now this module comes with few tools that it's worth to, to talk about. The first thing is this graph. Now the graph shows visually what's going on within the, within the noise profile with the orange color and the residual noise, which is this yellow line underneath. When dealing with noise reduction also, we're going to work a lot with this reduction slider. Now as you can see, I can take and grab my reduction slider and move it up. Everything greater than 12 is going to increase the gap between the noise profile and the residual noise. Of course, the higher we go, the greater are the chances to separate the noise profile from the residual noise, 
but also the greater the chances to introduce a lot of artifacts. So what I would generally do is to highlight the entire section, press preview, and while I preview the section, I would find the best spot of where my reduction slider meets what I'm trying to find, which is the optimal level in discerning noise versus clear sound. Another thing you could do if you find yourself, you know, that, that the noise module is doing a better job in removing, you know, better frequencies versus other, you can click on this little icon over here, which it says curve. And actually by double clicking, creating breakpoints, they will let the denoise focus only on, let's say high frequencies or low frequencies. I'm going to reset this right now because that's not what we want. So again, I have my selection done. I will have the module to learn the profile. What I'll do is set also my quality of noise reduction algorithm to best, which is take a little longer to process the audio, but it will give me the greater result. And then last but not least, I will command A and make an entire selection and press preview. And watch me while I go uh, and uh, tweak a little bit the reduction slider. Great. Now, those two little lines that you saw in gray and white, those were referring to the input and the output. So the amount of input that feed the module and the amount of output that, of course, comes out of the module. Okay, I was very happy with how with what I heard. So I'm going to render this and import this into Pro Tools. My selection is still there. We have our playlist set. So I'm going to close the module send it back into Pro Tools, render the file. So right now we have the before. And after. In my opinion, it did a phenomenal job. All right, over here I have set up other two examples of where we could use the actual denoise module in order for you to remove the hum underneath the speech. And also we're gonna focus on how to remove air conditioning noise behind the speech. So here's my second example, give it a listen. Low frequency hums underneath dialogues can create a lot of problems. Let's see how Isotope RX can fix this issue in a very easy way. All right. Create my playlist, send it to repair. We're still set to extended log. As a matter of fact, we see the hum over here. I'm going to press F to select my frequency tool. Let's see if this is our frequency. Clearly. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is to use my the DHUM module. I'm gonna go here, I'm still at 60 Hertz. I'm gonna just render this, just to attenuate that a little bit more. Then I'm gonna close this and open the spectral denoise. Again, I'm gonna zoom in, command equal, move to a part of the clip where I had no speech, but only the noise profile so that the module can learn it. Select this. Learn. Okay. I'm going to command A. And I want to only output the denoise only. All right, I'm gonna remove the output only and I wanna mess around with the reduction slider to find the right balance between extrapolation of noise versus dialogue. 
again, through my preview, I can do this. Low frequency hums underneath dialogues can create a lot of problems. Let's see how Isotope RX can fix this issue in a very easy way. I'm more than pleased with what I've got. So right now what I'll do is to press render. And there we have it. Same as before, I'm going to move back into Pro Tools, make sure that my selection is there. Send it back into Pro Tools and render this. All right, again, we have a before. Low frequency hums underneath dialogues can create a lot of problems. Let's see how Isotope RX can fix this issue in a very easy way. And the after. Low frequency hums underneath dialogues can create a lot of problems. Let's see how Isotope RX can fix this issue in a very easy way. Nice. All right, I'm going to move towards another example where I have actually air conditioning noise. And that's again, um, this is an example where broadband noise, uh, meaning we have a noise that doesn't only has a fundamental frequency, but also have a sets of harmonic, can be easily addressed with the denoise module. So here's the new example. In a lot of situations when we receive production dialogues that have been recorded in an enclosed environment, we're going to run into a problem where the AC noise leads into the shotgun microphones. Let's see how Isotope RX can remove completely the air conditioning noise, leaving a pristine dialogue to mix in. All right, clearly we have a lot of air conditioning noise, and clearly this is in the way of our dialogues, making it very hard to mix the dialogues in and making it very hard also to have our audience to focus on exactly the intelligibility of what this dialogue is saying. So here's what I'm gonna do again, duplicate this playlist. Send this to Rx. So this is our dialogue. I'm going to actually change my resolution to bark. All right. I'm going to play back for you. In a lot of situations when we receive production dialogues that have been recorded in an enclosed environment, we're going to run into a problem where the AC noise leads into the shotgun microphones. Let's see how Isotope RX can remove completely the air conditioning noise, leaving a pristine dialogue to mix in. All right, so first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and spot where I have only the noise of the air conditioning. I'm going to keep changing my frequency scale to linear to see if there is anything up there, which I do not have it. I'm going to go back to logarithmic and then back to bark. All right, so to mix in. Okay, this last part of our dialogue has a lot of that AC noise within it. So what I'll do is to select this, open our spectral denoise module, and having the module to learn the AC profile noise. All right. So as you can see already, our reduction is set to 18, uh, a greater value than 12. Um, and as you can see right now, we have our noise profile versus the residual noise that have a greater distance. I'm going to select the entire portion of my audio, zoom out, and press preview to hear what actually the module is identifying as noise and how is properly separating the noise versus the audio that we're meaning to keep. In a lot of situations when we receive production dialogues that have been recorded in an enclosed environment, we're going to run into a problem where the AC noise leads into the shotgun microphones. Let's see how Isotope RX can remove completely the air conditioning noise, leaving a pristine dialogue to mix in. I mean, there is not even need to compare if we want to do it, we can compare the before and after. Uh, again, through this compare button is really cool because you can, you know, uh, compare the two things without actually committing the sound. So I'm going to give you a preview of the original audio. In a lot of situations when we receive production dialogues that have been recorded in an enclosed environment, we're going to run into a problem where the AC and after. 
In a lot of situations when we receive production dialogues that have been recorded in an enclosed environment, we're going to run into a problem where the AC noise sounded great to me. So I'm going to render this. And if I go back and forth with the history menu over here, you can even check the spectrum underneath the actual waveform view that changes. So initially, you see this thick line and it's harmonics going up into the spectrum of our dialogues. And then they've been heavily removed. Send them back into Pro Tools, render this, and again, we have the before. In a lot of situations when we receive production dialogues that have been recorded in an enclosed environment, we're going to run into a problem where the AC noise leads into the shotgun microphone and after. In a lot of situations when we receive production dialogues that have been recorded in an enclosed environment, we're going to run into a problem where the AC noise leads into the shotgun microphone. Great. And this concludes our denoise and dehum chapter. Now remember, use the denoise module for broadband noise issues like traffic background, air conditioning, or hums, and noises that have a broader spectrum to fix. Again, the key of making this module work is to find a section where your recording has nothing but noise so that the module can learn the profile and work properly in order to remove it. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Ciao.